The Queen of Flowers is probably the most well-known and recognizable of all flowers, but it doesn't always have the best reputation, since many people immediately think of old-fashioned roses of the musty, dusty kind, or of old soap, typically found in grandma's vanity. And whilst many still love the more powdery vintage rose, I must admit I dislike many rose dominant fragrances for the same reason. Chances are though, even if you think you hate roses and fragrances, it doesn't have to stay that way. Many of your favorite fragrances probably has it tucked away somewhere, perhaps not even listed in the house's officially shared notes on purpose. The rose is said to feature in at least 75% of modern perfumes for women, and in at least 10% of all men's fragrances. And since the rose is so extremely multifaceted, odds are big that you just haven't found the right one. Perhaps after being disappointed by those you've smelled, you just gave up and stopped to smell the roses altogether. As a cornerstone note in perfumery, however, this complex flower has the ability to tantalize and enthrall just about anyone. So maybe it's worth revisiting if you've been disappointed in the past. Because roses aren't just powdery and musky, but they can also be fresh, fruity, woody and murry. Now today I'll be reviewing Zaharoff's yet to be released offering Signature Rosé. And now I have to disclaim that George is a friend, which means I could be biased. But to be honest, I just wouldn't have reviewed it if I didn't like it. He didn't ask for a review or anything of the sorts, but he was just excited to share this new offering of his targeted towards women. And I was lucky enough to be one of the first to get my nose on this. It's only due to be released at the earliest in March. But after going through most of this 10 ml, I just know it's going to get at least as much hype as his previous hits for men. And now before getting into the specifics of this beauty, I'd like to delve into its main note in more detail, the rose, more specifically the Bulgarian and Turkish rose. If you just want to see the review, feel free to skip to the appropriate timestamps. Now, the Queen of Flowers has played a major role in poetry, religion, art, literature, music, medicine, fashion design, home decoration, and even in cuisine. But its link to perfume seems as old as time. Emperor Nero was so crazy about roses that he had pipes installed so that his dinner guests could be spritzed with rose water. Now, Josephine Bonaparte was famous for her love of roses and her huge collection and the famed paintings of her roses by the Belgian botanist painter Pierre Joseph Redouté earn him the nickname Raphael of Roses. Another queen famous for her love of this queen of roses was Cleopatra, whose bed was supposedly covered with roses when she welcomed Mark Anthony to her boudoir. Even the floor was said to be carpeted under a thick layer of fresh picked petals. Now, nothing's more luscious and velvety smooth than a round rose juxtaposed by its sharp thorns. You can't help but want to swim in a bed of roses. And whether they're strewn out onto your honeymoon bed or as confetti at a wedding, roses are just inextricably linked to love and making love. Now, flowers stand for passion and romance in general. Even the term deflower connotes initiation into passionate experiences. But the red rose has been the flower of love in every culture that has known it. Mandy Aftel talks about how a full-blown rose is like a voluptuous woman, opening and closing like receptive female genitalia. It's been called an aphrodisiac, felt to drive away melancholia and lift the heart. In classical mythology, sea foam dripped from Aphrodite's body as she was born, which turned into white roses and represented her purity and innocence. Later, whilst trying to help her wounded lover Adonis, she sheds a few drops of blood onto a white rose, which turned it red, referring to her desire and passion. 
it's not all roze geur and maneschijn though. Um, this is basically a Dutch proverb that literally translates to it's not all rose scent and moonshine, meaning the same as it's not all lollipops and rainbows. So the less peachy part is that the rose is also associated with degeneration, pain, suffering and death, and is known to denote sinful acts in the scented boudoir. Pause and read if you'd like to know more, because I could go on and on, and I know this is about fragrances, but... <laughs> now, following the Christianization of the Roman Empire, the rose started symbolizing the Virgin Mary. Now, meaning has been attributed to flowers for thousands of years, and they can be a means of cryptological communication, called floriography, which means the language of flowers. We're all familiar with Shakespeare's infamous words from Romeo and Juliet. What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other word would smell as sweet. But poetry and literature, as well as history and religion, have been riddled with its symbolism for centuries. The rose is associated with secrecy because Cupid gave a rose to the silent god so that he wouldn't reveal the secrets of Venus. And that's why the term sub rosa denotes secrecy or confidentiality. Sub rosa meaning under the rose. The deep red rose and its thorns have been used to symbolize both the intensity of romantic love and the blood of Christ. The rose symbol eventually led to the creation of the rosary. Pink roses imply a lesser affection, whilst White roses suggest virtue and chastity, and yellow roses stand for friendship or devotion. The black rose has a long association with death and black magic. Even sports and politics haven't remained unaffected by its allure. In politics, for example, it's the symbol of socialism. It's the state flower of five American states, England's National Rugby Union team and the Rugby Football Union adapted the Red Rose as their symbol. And the English Civil Wars of the 15th century were called Wars of the Roses. The rose is a woody, perennial flowering plant of the genus Rosa and belongs to the family Rosacea, not to be confused with Rosacea, the skin condition. And Gertrude Stein may have claimed that a rose is a rose is a rose is a rose, but one rose is not the other, especially to the perfumer. The scent of a rose is immediately familiar, but in perfumery it's also incredibly varied. There are actually over 300 species of roses and tens of thousands of cultivars or varieties. And according to fossil evidence, it's over 35 million years old. Most typically associated with everything feminine, it is quite a popular ingredient in perfume targeted towards men too. Um, the teacher of Alexander the Great, for example, suggested that men need light perfumes of rose and lily, whilst women needed deeper perfumes. And another manly man, Henry VIII, used the scent of Damascena rose to amplify his majesty and to project even more presence and magnificence. With its very low yield, rose essential oil is a rare and valuable essence. About 2,000 flowers are required to produce one gram of oil. I'm just going to trust my sources of this because I'm too lazy to start doing maths and cross-check these ratios. But it takes 400 kilograms of fresh flowers to produce 120 grams of essential oil. So four and a half tons of roses are supposed to equal 1,600,000 rose blossoms, which equals about one kilo of rose essential oil. 170 roses are needed for one drop of absolute, and it takes around 12 tons of fresh flowers to produce just one kilogram of rose absolute. The wild rose usually has a simple flower head with just five petals, and domestication and the increase of petals have made the scent of the rose stronger. But most modern day varieties are ornamental and often not as fragrant. The two main roses used in perfumery are the Centifolia and Damascena rose. Centifolia means rose of 100 leaves or 100 petals, and is also known as the May rose or the cabbage rose. And it has a clear, sweet, 
spiced honeyed character lighter than the damask rose it's mainly grown in grass and it's known as the epitome of dewy freshness with the delicate ripe raspberry note flickering through the green core the damascena rose or the damask rose has a more distinctive rosy aroma with a fruity sweet and fresh character it's also a spiced wine-like slightly earthy honey rose mainly grown in Isparta, Turkey and Bulgaria, which both have ideal climate conditions for it to flourish because they're often planted in valleys near rivers where they're protected from the elements. Now, roses are harvested by hand in May through June and they're gathered in breathable jute or hessian bags in the mornings. They release their most intense fragrance when the blossoms are half open before the sun can evaporate the precious oils. Its fragrance is most concentrated and contains the most essential oils with the morning dew. They should be processed as quickly as possible before the levels of perfume oils decrease. So they're usually driven to a nearby distillery. The rose fades so fast that some farmers in Turkey and Bulgaria transport their own copper stills to the fields, heating them on the spot over wood fires to distill the precious rose oil. Extraction occurs in different ways to achieve three different products perfumers can work with. On the one hand, absolute. Now we have rose oil and rose water essential. Now, rose essential oil can come in the form of rose otto, also known as attar of roses, or Rose Absolute. Rose Otto is extracted via steam distillation, whilst Rose Absolute is obtained via solvent extraction or CO2 extraction. Rose oil is typically spicier and has a slightly green character. Rose Water Essential is more crisp, fresh, petal-like and slightly green. And Rose Concrete contains at least 60% of Rose Absolute and the rest is natural wax. It has a softer, less powerful character and is often used in conjunction with the absolute to extend the rose note more economically. Rose absolute is obtained through washing petals with a solvent, more specifically hexane, and these petals are loaded into an extractor and are spaced out, after which a solvent circulates and draws out the odor molecules. Eventually, the solvent is collected leaving a fatty substance which solidifies and turns into what we call a concrete. This concrete then macerates and the remaining substance is clarified, leaving a liquid which is then called the absolute. The smell is warmer, more honeyed and jammy, and perfumers use it for its magnificent diffusive power. The yield of the absolute is about six times greater than that of oil, which makes the price much higher. To a perfumer, the rose is like a kaleidoscope of different aromatic molecules, sometimes powdery or musky, sometimes fresh and dewy, woody, murry, clove-like, and often fruity. It can reveal fruity notes like pear, apple, raspberry, blackcurrant, and lychee. And I read that the rose typically features at least one of five following notes. Old rose, musk, tea rose, myrrh and fruit. There's fresh rose, green rose, fruity, powdery, sweet, abstract, animalic, earthy, musky, dark, spicy rose. <sighs> Lots of rose. Like romance, the rose is complex and is the ultimate heart note, a pillar around which other ingredients are sculpted, bridging between the deeper, richer bass notes and the lighter, sharper top notes, rounding off the rough edges, softening and harmonizing the now more coherent composition. Rose is typically a heart note, but with great longevity. And depending on the context of how it's blended, it may also act as a base note. Adding a bit of rose to a blend, if a mistake has been made, is said to have the capability of remedying the problem. Since Signature Rosé has both Bulgarian and Turkish rose, I wanted to delve into the differences between the two. It wasn't easy to find concrete answers, but I read that Bulgarian rose is considered the highest quality, followed by Turkish rose. 
And then elsewhere I read that Centifolia is the highest quality. Either way, both the Bulgarian and Turkish are considered high quality damask roses. Mandy Aftel really dif differentiates between the roses and says that the Russian rose is softer, the Indian is thinner, the Egyptian rose is richer, the Turkish sweeter, the Bulgarian rounder, Moroccan brighter. Now, around 70% of the rose oil in the world comes from Bulgaria. Adjectives I found specifically describing the Bulgarian rose were, for example, sweet, warm, floral, rosaceous bouquet with a green, spicy, herbaceous, fine, honeyed undertone, butter-like, watery, fresh, citrusy, fruity, lychee, artichoke, fresh rose petal notes. And then we can also differentiate between the essential oil, the otto or guitar, and the absolute and the concrete. Bulgarian otto is said to usually be lighter than Turkish varieties and is said to smell more like the fresh flower. The Turkish rose has a typical floral odor of rose with a spicy, honeyed, fruity, green character. Dewy pink petal notes, waxy, like a red velvet rose. Turkish rose otto is more velvety, full-bodied, waxier, heavier, and with wine-like, animalic, or slightly earthy qualities. So as I said, George is a friend, which means I had the opportunity to talk to him about this fragrance a bit after receiving it. And among other things, he told me how Signature Rosé came into being. So he was in Athens in the spring of 2019 and came across a small shop of religious artifacts in the old market where he smelt a rose incense, but he didn't buy it at the time. Now the scent kept haunting him after he returned to the US and it took him about a year to hunt down this specific shop and this specific rose incense, which inspired the fragrance. The moment it came in, he sent it to Claude Dier, resulting in this creation, using signature pour homme at the base. And the signature has myrrh, frankincense, sandalwood, oud, and lavender. Uh, and the noir is the signature without the lavender and added tonka. So it's basically signature Purom with rose, jasmine and anise. And I do get the root DNA of the signature Purom, but I find it very different. This isn't just signature Purom with some rose thrown in at all. Now the perfumer, Claude Dier, wasn't known to me and I haven't smelled much of his work, but a few that I do own are Silver Rain by La Prairie, Heat by Beyonce and Dark Cherry and Amber by Banana Republic, which are all okay, but nowhere near the quality of the signature rose. Nowhere near. The key ingredients are basically Zahar of Signature Purom and uh, a bunch of incense essence, uh, incense oil, Olibamum resin, uh, rose Turkish, Turkish rose absolute, uh, some more rose absolute, uh, red peony, jasmine petals, gold amber, musk, sugar crystals, and vanilla beans. Now, I've worn this all day. Um, I've worn this quite a bit in the past weeks, actually. But I'm going to respray for the top. Mind myself. And at the top, I get a very sparkling rose with wine and voluptuous, fragile peony. It reminds me of a sweet rose wine with fresh crisp petals floating on the top and this seductive rose scent lingers throughout but after 10 to 15 minutes the resins start shining through the peony known in japan and china as the king of the flowers adds to the uplifting top and heart and works brilliantly alongside its equally delicately petaled queen in the base, you're left with a stunning resinous, non-churchy rose incense and some smoky woody undertones. Now, nobody but the perfumer knows what's in this beauty, but both the musk, tea, myrrh and fruit qualities of the rose really shine here. I asked George about the ingredients and he told me that mainly natural oils and no synthetics are used and he doesn't want to peg Zaharoff as an all natural brand, but the oils in Rosé are natural oils. And through the company Maine, they are able to identify down to the farmer who harvested the oil. 
he said that they make the effort to really make this eco-friendly, sustainable, fair wage down to the carbon footprint of the oil. So I'm really impressed with the quality of this. And it's very clear to me that it's full of only the highest quality oils. And to me, it's really the most perfect rose fragrance, harmoniously combining the fresh, fruity sweetness of the rose with its murry, musky facets without ever becoming cloying. The longevity is quite good and lasts over eight hours on me. It does turn into a skin scent in the final hours uh, and the projection and sillage are decent to good, but nothing spectacular. Um, and I think some people might, might find this, the oomph in this a bit weaker compared to typical headier rose based fragrances. But I really like that, that it's not overwhelming and super wearable. Um, like f rose fragrances like Oud Bouquet or Delina really choke me out sometimes and I grow sick of them quite quickly. I can't wear them often. But this one, clearly I can wear all the time. And I think it would make a really good signature fragrance since it's incredibly unique with interesting facets of both the sensual darker resinous style with sweet, sparkling, fruity, juicy rosé wine. And this rosé wine note doesn't make you smell like an alcoholic, by the way. Instead, it reminds me more of this phenomenal fruity pomegranate rubus iced tea drink called Iga, EGA, locally made and sold in Parl in South Africa. Parl. So I find it's situated somewhere in the middle on the Oud Bouquet de Lina spectrum with added sparkle and minus the cloyingness. It's incredibly delicious, sexy, warm, sweet, comforting, and perfect for milder seasons like spring and autumn uh, and summer. This would be great in summer. Um, although I have definitely enjoyed wearing it in the colder winter weather too. Um, it's more feminine than masculine, but I think a confident man could definitely rock it. Um, and I think it's really phenomenal as a layering fragrance too, especially for men, if they layer it over something woody or smoky. I accidentally layered this by spraying this on top of some by the fireplace, which I'd worn all day. And that combo is really stunning. All in all, if you love rose, check this out. It's probably the best rose I've ever smelled. And if you dislike rose, also check this out because it's so unique and lovable that I think even rose haters will love this one. It's a chameleon. It's versatile. It's a world in a fragrance. It's wearable in any season, day or night, by any sex on any occasion. It's not at all one-sided. It's really complex, high quality, unique, wearable with an interesting evolution. It's absolutely stunning. Uh, and I will treasure these last drops until it's released so I can get a full bottle. But uh, big, big thumbs up. I highly recommend it. And yeah, keep up the good work, George. And thanks for sending me this. It was a delight to review. Bye, guys. And he doesn't want to peg Saharov as to make the rose the official floral, floral emblem of the uh, floral emblem. Gave a rose to because the auto or Atar and the absolute or the concrete and the, and the absolute and the concrete and the absolute and the concrete.